Let's go a little bit further on that, on the purposeful nature of what you'd like to see from this White Sox team. Because I, I think the idea of this conversation is I'm just trying to find, figure out a path in my own head that I would hope that the White Sox would deploy that would consistently not having me feel as insulted as I do from the owner, the general manager, the manager. I'm not going to make you do the announcer thing, but you know what I mean? Oh, he's, he's, yeah. he's, fr- look, he's fresh on the job, but again, yeah. It, it, yeah. There, there are elements to it where when I listen to him, I think he thinks that White Sox fans just woke up yesterday watching baseball. Yeah, I've got um, and- theories. I don't. I don't want to maximize time on that if you don't want to go there. But I definitely. I, I hear what you're saying, though. I want to. I, I want to give him. I want to give him room to breathe. But please, yeah, I, I'd yes. love to get your, your your quick take on it because um, I I wish he would just kind of relax a little bit into I, uh, yeah. what, what it is to be a White Sox fan and, and maybe you know. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the. That, that's one of the issues, right? He he didn't grow up a White Sox fan. He didn't grow up. Um, in Chicago. And, and those elements are so rare, which is why the Benetti thing was so difficult to, to stomach is this guy grew up a Sox fan, grew up knowing this team. Um, and, and he's got the broadcasting chops. So Triffin had to be caught up to speed on 120 plus years of history and what has been going on with this team and why fans are so angry. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and what the future might be like, He's got to do that in his real first role as a play-by-play guy against an absolute next to an absolute legend, you know? So like defer to stone more, I would say like, let stone take as much, but you know, like he's got a slam ball background and, and not to knock any of that, but I think he's trying to generate so much from nothing. He's really trying to, uh, you know, squeeze everything. And, 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 and I don't think he knows maybe the fan base enough to realize like we could smell that we can smell the we can artificial stuff. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, so he'll learn though. The, the problem is the, the, what's unfair for Schriffen is it's not like he can go in a laboratory and just work out all this kinks. He has to learn. He has to like figure this out in real time during a horrible season while we're all watching and listening, you know, historically Every, horrible yeah, historically. A that's a, that's a tough, it's a tough road, you know? So yeah, I think he is going to get better. It's just, you know, there's going to be some cringe stuff. Um, again, a- anybody go back and listen to your first, if you do radio podcasting TV, go to your first stuff, go back. And if you have it there somewhere, and you will wince. You'll turn it off after the first couple minutes. Like, and we're just living in a world, unfortunately, where everything is under a microscope for Schriff in, in this first year. Well, and I, I, I think, I hope that he comes to learn um, that I think Chicago fan bases of any sport, uh, we love honesty. Um, and we we we're smart. We know the game. Yeah, we know yeah, what's well, going on. And, like, and we can wallow. We can wallow in the negative with the best of them. I don't think that's exactly what we want from Schriffen to like call out the team. But you know, a little brevity um, and a little bit of an understanding of a situation. And and yeah. and I get it on a game to game, inning to inning basis. He's really trying to figure out a way to turn the White Sox into some sort of superhero, some sort of underdog that they are, they, this team is not constructed to be like that. Um, yeah. And, and I get yeah, that he's it's taken a, on a lot. Yeah. He's taken on a lot. And I think he's trying to maybe do a lot. I think maybe the marching orders were you really, you're going to have to sell this team, you know, because they're not going to be, they're doing it on their own. So you're going to have to hype up this team and how you hype something up it doesn't necessarily have to be volume and what you say, you know, it, it's, it's, it could be very purposeful, like choose your moments, you know, and so he'll get there. I don't want to make excuses for him. I mean, who knows with this new TV package, uh, he might be a one year, it might be a one year thing and they, yeah. and they might decide to go a different direction. Well, let's, so let's get into it because I love optimism. Let's get into something about this White Sox team that we can excited. I don't know if is necessarily the right word. Maybe I would temper that and say, what are some things on this White Sox team right now um, that you that you've liked that you that you've seen and you said, you know what, I, I'd like to see how this plays out over the next couple of months. 
I, I like Corey Lee. Um, yes. I, I really do. I, I the, This ridiculousness of alternating Maldonado and Corey Lee, and then you had Maldonado and Corey Lee both in the lineup. So you Multiple couldn't really times. pinch. Yeah, you couldn't pinch hit for Maldonado late in the game because Corey Lee was already uh, – it, it, it's it's goofy the justification the defense of Grafold the veterans boy does he defend veterans that have been god awful like Ben Attendi and Maldonado but will throw a young guy under the bus you know as quickly as possible that is also because guess what it's going to be all young guys very soon so so then what are you going to do Grafol you know I mean it's going to be uh, everybody's going to be against you if you're if they're not already so I, I like Corey Lee. Uh, I want to see more of more of that. Uh, I've actually liked his offense, uh, his his bat. He's got a little bit of pop. When Ramos was around, you know, now he's in Triple A. I, I liked Ramos. I mean, he was he had a couple games there where he was really feeling it. I mean, he he rose up to the occasion. And I I think you're looking at a future third baseman because I don't think Mancada is wearing a White Sox uniform beyond this year. So. Um, you got Lenin Sosa, you're getting some more time right now. I've been disappointed, but then again, I don't think he's had like extended, extended looks like, you know, real extended time, like serious extended time. But it does seem that the, the stage is a little too big for him. This series, he's been looking good. The, this Cubs series, I mean, he had a no doubter on Tuesday uh, and he's got the offense going again uh, here on Wednesday. Uh, of course, you, we, we talk crochet. I hope he's in the cards for the future, but this is a guy that wanted in on the starting rotation, only at 73 innings on his arm in the last three years, said, I want this, and he proved it. He earned it in spring training. And aside from some bumps, which is expected, it's going to happen. Starting pitchers are going to have some bumps, especially someone like Crochet, you know, is an inaugural season. He has got some nasty stuff. He has got some must-watch stuff. I mean, this is like Sale, Rodon 2021 at the beginning, Cease during that runner-up Cy Young. You know, I hopefully I'm not putting up, you know, too much on his shoulders here, but when he's on, wow, he's got some crazy stuff. So, you know, those things, Luis Robert Jr., I think is going to stick around. Like, I don't think a farm system has got what it takes to rip Luis Robert Jr. away from the Chicago White Sox. I think he sticks around. And, you know, you saw what he did on Tuesday. I mean, he had like a 500 foot home run and it was pretty effortless. And just to be able to watch him play when he's healthy, what he can do defensively and offensively, he changes absolutely everything. Now, going away from 35th and Shields, you got to look at double A, you know, guys like Thorpe and 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 then uh, Iriarte and guys that they got like in the C steel. Uh, go further down, and you've got Schultz, who is also a very exciting, you know, prospect. And then, you know, Colson Montgomery in AAA, which we're all waiting to see. When is that going to happen? Is it this year? Is it is it early next year? Um, you know, can the bat make the switch to yeah. uh, the majors? Is he going to be your next shortstop uh, moving forward? So. There are pieces there. I feel like this is 2017, 2018 all over again, you know, where we're prospect watching, but uh, there's some excitement there for the future, for sure. No Schultz, I'm uh, completely on board with. I know that the productivity hasn't been maybe quite to the liking for the White Sox with Colson Montgomery. I would still try and give him some run. Maybe you just kind of wait a little bit later in the season to try and give him a smaller sample size, a little bit smaller taste of major league pitching as you head into the off season. And man, when it comes to Louis, Luis Robert, I, I'm right there with you because honestly, we have to be, we have to be very careful with him where I, I don't think it's the five or six prospect package. I, I think you're talking when you trade for Luis Robert, I think you're talking about a guy, you're talking about the Jackson holidays of prospects yeah, yeah. Um, and I, unfortunately for the Baltimore Orioles, a lot of these dudes have already come up and now they're on the major league roster. I mean, that would have been an interesting, whatever, if they really wanted to go for it, but no, Luis Robert, I mean, is as close to a superstar as the Chicago white Sox have. I think he's the best player perhaps in Chicago baseball right now. So Nick, I mean, that has to be, that has to be top shelf quality. I mean, that has to be yeah. sure fire. You can't just do, give me five or six, 19 year olds exactly. and, and, and see in four years. 
Yeah, I, I don't want like one of those seven player packages where there's four guys that you probably are never going to see and three toolsy. guys that are close. He's <laughs> toolsy. He's rangy. <laughs> like, uh, high floor, low ceiling. Um, you know, he's got eight pitches in his arsenal, throws two good, but with some work, you know, he could be something. It's like, no, I, not his I, bat to ball I, skills. He's got great <laughs> raw power. <laughs> Joe Borchard. <laughs> Let's do yeah, it. Three scouts out of the, uh, Northwest Pine region said that uh, he's got, you know, some John Olerud type qualities. So, you know, that kind of stuff, save it. Like I need, I need some superstars. <laughs>